If you have your Bibles, we want our scripture will be taken from the book of Deuteronomy, um, chapter 8. And we want to read a couple of verses from chapter 8. And so when you have it, you would say, Amen. I want to welcome those who are um, watching via the internet tonight. We welcome you to our Bible study here tonight. And for the next couple of weeks, we are uh, venturing out in. Um, in our studies, the test of ministry preparation, and we have been talking about you know how and how and the the hows of how God teaches us in preparing us for ministry, and um, we have talked about the character of true leadership. So Deuteronomy chapter eight, and we want to read it, um, a couple of verses. So if you have your Bible. Um, I will read a couple of verses, so we're going to start on this topic tonight. Deuteronomy ch chapter number 8, verse 1, we will start with verse 1, we go all the way to verse 17. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and, and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garment did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastened his son, so the Lord God chastened you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of, brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley of vines and fig trees and pomegranates in a land of olive oil and honey, a land which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones and iron are out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Be aware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpion and thirsty land where there was no water who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you, and that he might test you. Do you to do you good in the end? Then you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hands have gave me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is in this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall perish. As a nation which the Lord destroyed before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. We want to thank God for his reading of his word tonight. As I said, and I want to challenge you tonight as we, we head into our topic tonight because we are in, the, in a series that we are speaking on the test of ministry preparation. And we talk about all the different tests that as a believer, as a child of God, that we have to go, go through. There's over 15 different types of tests that is recorded in Scripture that the, the servants of the Lord um, will go through. As I said before you, when there, there's a calling upon your life, you know, we have seen that, you know, the seed of ministry is really salvation. 
And then we see the call that we talked about last week is the birth of ministry. And the preparation is a test of ministry. So every person who are called into ministry, there's a seed that is um, planted within them. And then there will be the burden of the ministry that you were called. You, were, you accepted Jesus Christ. Now there's a call upon your life for a particular direction that God wants you to go. And then there's a preparation, which means that God will prepare you for the call. So that means that you will have to go through the test of ministry, which we call preparation. And so we're talking about the test of ministry preparation. So every, every child of God who are saved, are called in that particular direction of ministry. And therefore, God will allow that person to go through the, the preparation or the test of ministry. And as a result of going through the test, every test that you go to is to bring every child of God or every leader, every servant of the Lord to a place of, ministry, of maturity. And that will be called the fulfillment of ministry. So before there can be maturity, there will be the preparation test. So every child of God who are called by God into ministry will have to go through the test of ministry. And there's different types of tests that I said. Um, just to recap, I said there's a time test, there's a word test, there's a character test, there's a motivation test, there's a servant test. Also, there's a wilderness test. We have misunderstanding tests because leaders can be misunderstood. Then there is a patient test where every one of us, that is something that we will have to face. Then there are times that every servant, every child of God who are called into ministry, they will experience the frustration test. You get frustrated, and there's a frustration test. So we are going to go through each one of these as we go through um, this, the teaching. Then there's the discouragement test that many times when you're in ministry or when you are involved in ministry, you can be discouraged. All right, so there's the discouragement test. Then there's a warfare test that we all will have to go through or face battles and warfare. So there's a warfare test. Then there's a self-will test. Also, we will see there's a test about the vision test, and then the, the usage test, and then it comes the promotion test. So all of these tests would be in, in an aspect of preparation to bring you to a place of um, maturity. Maturity is ministry fulfillment. And for God to use anybody who will surrender themselves and make themselves available to Almighty God to be used by Him, God will allow them to go through the, the different tests because the test is for preparation. As, I, as I, I said last week, and I just want to recap a few things before we go into the wilderness test that we are doing tonight. I talk about the whole process that every one of us will be tested. God will allow us to test us he will, because it's, the, it's the, the process of preparation. But the whole aspect of this signifies that he is and working on us so that we will be um, leaders, true leaders with character. Character of true leadership will be exemplified from our life because every person is called to lead. Are you hearing me? We are all ministers when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become minister. And so therefore, therefore God will allow us to go through the process because it's, uh, it's to show us so the character of true leadership that is in us so that we will have to go through it. I asked the question last week, what is character? And we defined it as we went along. But from the, from the perspective of what we're looking at as what is um, true leadership, character is the foundation of great leadership. Character is the foundation of great leadership. And therefore, when we talk about the spiritual man tonight, the spiritual man must never try to build character upon spiritual gifts. Because a lot of times people try to build character upon spiritual gift because of what they can do. It's not a matter of what you can do because a person can do, can do a lot of different things, have skills and ability and giftings, and yet still their attitudes and their character does match up to what the Word of God says. So we, we found out um, from Scripture that we cannot, the spiritual man must never build his character upon spiritual gift, but rather spiritual gift must be built on character. Spiritual gift must be built on character. That's why when we accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in, inside of us. Our body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as that daily we, be, we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, amen, and the Holy Spirit is shaping us, you know, and shaping our character so that the, the fruit of the Spirit can be manifested in our lives or come to maturity. Are you following me? 
And I, I said to you, the following description displays different aspects of the word character. We said character is the inner life of a man or woman. It will the character will either reflect the traits of the sinful nature, and that, is, that nature will be influenced by the world, or the traits of divine need to be influenced by the word of God. So a person can have a character which is influenced by the world. All right? Nothing good is going to come out of that. But then the person can have a character that is influenced by the Word of God. And that is the character that God um, desired to uh, come forth of our life. I also said that character is the sum of all negative and positive qualities in a personal life. Again, let me say that. Character is the sum of all the negative and positive qualities in a personal life, ex exemplified by one thought, values, motivation, attitude, feelings, and action, all right? This is how character is, being, is going to be exemplified from somebody's life, all right? You can tell what is the thoughts that is coming out of your mind, all right? Is it good thoughts or bad thoughts, all right? So our character is a sum of all the negative and positive qualities in a personal life, and it will, exempli it will be exemplified by one thoughts, one values, one motivation, one attitude, and feelings, and action. So when you start to see somebody, what they value the most, or what are the values of their life, what motivates them, what is their attitudes and feelings, you can tell what type of character that person has. Or in other words, what that person or that person is being influenced by. Either they've been influenced by the world or being influenced by the word. And it can tell by these things being exemplified from one life. Are you following me? It's like you can tell what type of tree it is by the fruits it is bearing. And so whatever the fruits are coming out from a person's life, you can tell what type of character or, or what, um, in what direction they are being influenced, whether by the word of God or by the world. All right? Character is not only how a person acts. Character is also included a person in their thoughts and motives and attitude. All right? So you can tell by the, the attitudes and the motives and what they think because what you're thinking will, it will be demonstrated in action all right so we have seen that that character is also includes the person in a thoughts motives and attitude so to change the character of a person one must go deeper and deal with the heart so in other words what this is telling us that we can't just look at things from a face value and say, well, okay, this person is a person of character being influenced by the word. Because people could put on a show. So it go deeper than just the, the outward manifestation is what is, 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 is going on in the heart. Because the Bible says, what is in the heart, the mouth speak it. All right? Character does not appear without pressure. So in other words, the pressure of life tests right what the lord has really accomplished in a person character so any person that god is going to shape and mold them life they will have to um, go through pressure every child of god the pressure of life test is what the lord has really accomplished in a person character character is formed under such pressure and circumstances so you can tell it's like you can tell when you're being squeezed what is coming out of you when life pressure put a squeeze on you, what do you confess? What do you declare with your life? What is your attitude? What is your motive? When somebody gets you in your nerves as an individual and you're supposed to be a man or woman of God, what comes out of you when the pressure is on? Are you following me? And so character is formed under such pressure and circumstances. Character is not only that what other people see on the outside, but also what they do not see. So it's not just what you, you're seeing on the outside, but it's what people don't see. A person can do many outward religious work and still be ungodly. Work are not always a sign of good character because we could call up and doing work and yet still be ungodly in our hearts and attitude. We also say that character is not limited to having wisdom to comment on the behavior of others. A person with true character doesn't just verbally tell other people what to do but live as examples worthy of falling so in other words a person of character will not just say 
or just speak words, they will be demonstrated by action. All right? So the bottom line is the reason why I share this with you about character, all through the different tests that we go through, God is forming and shaping character in individual lives. And as we read tonight about this passage of Scripture, that the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 tells us, from the New Living Translation, it says, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would really obey his commandment. Verse 3 tells us, Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people need more than bread for their life Amen. Real, real life comes by feeding on every word of the Lord. Then in verse 16, it tells us, He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and to test you for your own good. All right? Verse 17, in this same passage of Scripture, it says, He did it so you would never think that it was your own strength and energy that made you wealthy. And this is when we speak about this, this passage of the scripture engaged because it talks about the wilderness test. First of all, the word wilderness is defined as a desert place. A desert place. And we will all experience a desert place because as a child of God, we will go through the wilderness test. The, the wilderness is also not, is not only defined as a desert place, but a place that is uncultivated. All right, it is uncultivated or lived in a state of disorder wilderness are places that we can understand from these from these words that I would say tonight wilderness are places of difficulties when we experience wilderness it can be a wilderness or a place of difficulties because we all find ourselves in position or places of difficulties in our life when it talks about the wilderness, it even talks about the wilderness place. It also speaks about the place of pressure. Wilderness are, a, are places not only of difficulties, but of pressure. And we all experience pressure in our life. A wilderness place also can be a place of insufficient resources. That's a wilderness in our life. When we, when we don't have... Um, we don't have we have insufficient resources, amen, to take us through. That could be a wilderness for somebody. Are you following me? Also, the wilderness is a place of opposition. And I'm saying these words to you because I want you to, to see the different type of things that we'll face in, the, in this place called the wilderness. It's a place of difficulties. It's a place of pressure. It's a place of inf insufficient resources. Have you ever been there? A place where there's not enough um, resources, insufficient resources. That's a, that's a wilderness place. A place of pressure, that's a wilderness place. A place of difficulties, that's a wilderness place. It's also a place of opposition. We get opposition from people, from the enemy. All right? That's a wilderness place, a place of opposition. One of the questions most asked in the church is, why? In one of... Our beloved hymn, there are these lines. We wonder why the test when we try to do our best. Why? We wonder why the test when we try to do our best. We ask why. The question we ask when we're going to wilderness test, why is this happening to me? Are you following me tonight? Why is this happening to me? Is anybody, have anybody asked that question? If, if you didn't understand what is a wilderness test, then when we come, we, we define what wilderness is all about. As we said, it's a desert place. It's a place that is uncultivated or lived in a state of disorder. And we find this wilderness, wilderness are places such as difficulties, pressures, insufficient resources, oppositions. And when we when we are going through these type of things, whether we are bombarded with pressure, whether we have insufficient resources, we will come to ask ourselves, why? Why is this happening to me? When I'm trying to do my best, why I'm going to a test? 
Why are we going through this? Why this is happening to me? And it is acts when bad things are happening to good people. When you're living to your best, when you're doing your best, when you're, when you're making the sacrifice, when you're living for the, for the Lord, and you would see as you do these things, and you, you're living faithful, and you see the ungodly prospering, and while you're serving the Lord, you're experiencing all these difficulties, you tend to ask yourself the question, why is bad things happening to me? It is acts when great efforts produce only poor results. I am doing my best, but here it is. I'm doing my best, but I'm not getting, I'm getting poor result. At least I'm doing my best, I should get good results. But there are times then when we are doing our best, amen, and we, we're doing great effort to produce, and yet still there's poor results. And when we find ourselves in this position, amen, we got to understand. That's why it's important for every child of God to understand the different tests that we go through. It is acts when, when the, the expected success is delayed. Why it is that um, I, 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 I do my best, I should get the promotion. Whether it's from a job or uh, some good, I should succeed, but there is a delay in success in my life. The question why is acts also when the wicked prosper while the righteous is struggling? We ask those questions. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best. People tend to deal with difficulties better if they understand that what they endure serves their purpose. And that's my, my main focus tonight is to get you to a place to understand that when we are faced with difficulties, when we understand, amen, understand why we are going through, what we are going through, then we can better understand how to endure, amen, when we are going through these difficult times. Because a survey has have done and it says people tend to deal with difficulties better if they understand that what they endure serves their purpose. So if you're going through difficulties, you're going through the pressures of life, if there's insufficient resources, there's opposition that is coming your way, and you're asking yourself these questions, it is safe to understand you tend to deal with, with these difficulties better if you know why you're going through it, and that it serves a purpose for your life. If I'm going through it and I don't understand well, why I'm going through it, then a hundred and one, more than one questions will be asked. But when you come to that place, child of God, tonight, and you, and you come, come to a place to understand why you're going through what you're going through, why you're going through this wilderness test, then it makes it much more easier to deal with the difficulties because you know that these difficulties that you're going through serves a purpose. Knowing that the trials of your faith are not pointless, but making the endurance bearable. That's why James tells us, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that it's going to work, it serves a purpose. It makes you complete and lacking nothing. It is a shape and a molding character in your life. So knowing that the trials of your faith are not pointless, but it is making the endurance bearable. Are you hearing me tonight? So as a child of God, and especially called by God, there's a seed that is planted, the seed of ministry. But when there's a direct call of God upon your life, amen, and God is calling you to a particular work in ministry, then you will go to the preparation test, the test of ministry. Because God makes sure that you are qualified first. And in the process of going through the wilderness, this is one of the tests that he qualifies you through. Remember in the same token that God do not allow you to go through something just to expose you and to make you feel bad. That's not the intent of, of, of God or his, the intent of the process that he allows us to go through. Everything that God allows us to go through has a purpose. And that's why for, he, he shows us through the scriptures tonight that when we come to this understanding while we are going through the trials of our faith, amen, it makes the enduring bearable. Romans 8 and 20, the, a very famous passage of scripture that most of us know tonight. And we know 
that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. How many all things work together for good? But for who? For who good? For those who are called. So we talk about call of ministry. You accepted Jesus Christ, salvation. Then there's the birth of ministry, the seed that is planted in you. There's a call, and now you're going through the preparation. So all things is going to work together for your good. Every test that you go through, amen, or God allow you to go through, is going to work for your benefit because you're called according to his purpose. So as I said, there are so many different tests. And so what, I, what I'm... I'm, I'm I'm coming to the places to, so that we can get the understanding of the word. An understanding of what we are facing so that we can make, amen, the enduring bearable. Not be like some other people. From the moment they start to be tested or the moment they're going through a situation, they don't understand why they're going through and therefore they become perplexed in their mindset. They become so worried. They become disenchanted. They become discouraged. Amen. And they don't understand that what God, if you are a child of God and call according to his purpose, amen, your life is going to be challenged. Your life is going to go through the process, but it's going to work for the betterment because you are called. I you me? What's the purpose of every test that we go through in our life? The purpose of the test that we go through is to reveal what we understand. To reveal what we understand. That's, that's the purpose of every test that you and I will experience in our life. Amen. To reveal what we understand. So in other words, God wants us to learn. God wants us to study, to show us self-approved. God says that we must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord. And so therefore, when God allows us to go through the test, the test serves a purpose so that it will reveal what we understand concerning God. What we understand concerning God's word. So the purpose of the test, number one, is, is to reveal what we understand. Because if you understand, amen, God's word, then and if you come to this understanding, when you go through the test, you know, amen, that it will better help you to deal with the difficulties, amen, rather than becoming discouraged, disenchanted, amen, with your life. So every person is going to go through the test. And therefore, the purpose of every test is, number one, is to reveal what we understand. Secondly, is to also to reveal what we don't understand. Because not everything we get it right. And therefore, the, the purpose of the test that we go to, it will reveal what we don't understand. Because there are many things we don't understand. And that's why God allows us to go through the test, amen, to reveal what we do not understand. Also tonight, the purpose of the test that we go through, or God allows us to go through, is to reveal to us the, the application applicability of the lesson. In other words, did we receive it so that we can apply it in our everyday life? Because God will not allow you to just go to the test, amen, done to learn something. Every test that we go to or every situation that we go to, it must be a learning process and we take what we learn and apply it in, in our daily living. That's why the word of God is applicable to every situation that we are facing. Because when we go through the test, we glean the principle. We learn from it. And therefore, we apply it Amen. when next we are going through situations. Or also that we can help others because of what we have been through. So it revealed to us the applicability of the lesson. What we need to do and to understand, or what we need to apply, apply the principles when we are faced with a test. So the purpose of every test is to reveal what we understand, reveal what we don't understand, and reveal to us the applicability amen, of the lesson. That's the purpose of every test that we go through. And then we say, well, why the wilderness test? Why would God allow you to experience a wilderness test? What is the wilderness I said again? Wilderness is defined as a desert place. A, a place that is uncultivated or lived in a state of disorder. Why would God allow you to experience this type of wilderness test? 
where there is, in other words, a state of disorder. Are you hearing me? The Bible tells us when we look at, at Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. There was no order. So the earth was existing, but there was, was no order. And then God spoke the word, and things came into order. Are you following me? And so we must understand. So, so we understand the purpose of the test is to reveal what we understand, is to reveal what we don't understand, and also to reveal the applicability of the lesson. But why God allow you and I to go to the wilderness test? As I defined, the wilderness is a place of difficulties, is a place of pressure, is a place of insufficient resources, is a place of opposition. Let me say that again. For those watching by the internet, you may be in a wilderness place if you're experiencing difficulties, if you're experiencing the pressures of life, if you are experiencing insufficient resources in your life, or you are facing opposition, you are in a wilderness test. But every child of God will have to go through the test. And so when we are going through the test, the purpose of the test, the purpose of the test, and I reiterate, the purpose of the test is to reveal what we understand or to reveal what we don't understand and also to reveal to us the applicability of the lesson. So God will allow you to go through it to learn lesson so that you can apply the lesson. But why? Why would God allow His children, those who are saved and are called, why would He allow the wilderness test in our life? Because as I said in the beginning, God is about shaping character. God is about making men and women of, of integrity and of a character. Integrity is how the word is matched up. Your lifestyle is matched up the word that you spoke. Are you hearing me? Because some people can talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. And when you're a person of integrity, you'll not only talk the talk, but you'll walk the walk. And... As I said to you, why would, the, why would God allow you and I to go to the wilderness test? Because number one, the reason why that God allows us to go to the wilderness test is to humble us. You'll be surprised how many people need to be humbled. Because there is pride always gets in the way. There's things in our life that God sees that is, it's, it's, it holds us back, in other words, Amen. From, from going forward in our life. And therefore, he has to humble us. Because he sees things in our life that such as things like pride and the whole content of what pride is. Amen. We may have it in our life today. We might be boastful. There may be things that God says, I got to humble you. So one of, one of the reasons why God allows us to go to the wilderness says, is to humble you. To humble you. Remember, he used the will and the test for Moses. And we will get into that. The, the test that he will allow us to go to. The will and the test increase a leader appreciation for the good things that God has already put in his life. But he used it to humble, humble that person. Humble that person. God will allow a, a wasteland experience. Amen. Also to drive a, a child of God or a leader to cultivate his life in prayer and the word. Are you following me? So we, we, we see here that the wilderness test will bring you to a place to humble you. It is also, um, God allow you to go to the wilderness test to prove your character. And we define character because I, you can either be influenced by the world or influenced by the word. And if you're influenced by the world, this is what your character is going to be. It's going to be a lifestyle that doesn't please God. Because your mindset, your mentality, your attitude, amen, all of these things will not be one that is going to please God because it will be from a selfish uh, perspective. But your character could be one also that is influenced by the word. And you can tell, as I said before, you can tell what your character is because what or who is influencing your life. If you're influenced by the word of God, then it is going to be projected not only from speaking, but it will be your lifestyle is going to demonstrate, amen, what the word of God says. Are you following me? So why do wilderness says to humble you, to prove your character? 
also to teach you that you need more than bread. Are you hearing me? Because if you take the time to read this passage of scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 1 to 17, you would see. God allows us to go to the willingness to show us, amen, or to teach us that your life, you need more than just bread. Life is much more than just the, the, the physical, natural life. Life is much more than the materialistic things because the Bible says, amen, life amen, it does not um, contain in the abundance of, one, of the things that one possess. So it's not about how much things that we can own or possess in life. So that's why God allow us to go to, go to the wilderness test to bring us a place to teach us that you need more than bread. Are you following me tonight? Also tonight, and I got to do this quickly because of time. We go to, or God allows us to go to the wilderness test because to discipline us for the maturity or self-control. Because as we have read through the scripture, if you are a child of God, you will be disciplined. Because whoever belongs to God, he will chasten them. And if you are a child of God, there are times that God will have to bring us to a place. He will have to discipline us in order to bring us to a place of maturity or self-control. Because when you don't have self-control, then you'll be gullible to everything that the enemy brings to, um, towards you. You'll be gullible. But when you have self-control, amen, even though that your flesh has been tempted, Amen. It's because you can say, I put the flesh under subjection to the will of God. Are you following me? But when there is no self-control, you'll be gobbled to take everything that the enemy bring to you. Are you following me? That's why as a child of God, we must be self-controlled. You cannot say that you don't, you cannot be self-controlled. Every child of God must have this quality of being self-controlled. Are you following me? So we see here, the willingness test is to humble us. It's to teach us, amen, or to prove our character. It's to teach us that we need more than just physical bread. It is to discipline us for maturity or self-control. Also, the, the willingness test is to reveal to us that it was not our own strength that, will, that made us prosper. Because I want you to know, there will be accomplishments in our life when we start serving God. God will prosper us. But as we read, it is in, in verse 17, it tells us of chapter 8 of Deuteronomy. It says, it said, then, you sh then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have given me this wealth. So in other words, people, God will allow you to go to the wilderness to let you know. The only reason that why you are prospering is not because you did it on your own strength. But he says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Are you hearing me? So God allow us to go to the wilderness to bring us to a place to understand the only reason that you're succeeding in your life, the only reason that you're prospering is because he gave you the power to get wealth. And wealth we talk here is not just amen, money or, or the physical things. Wealth could talk about the places that we are succeeding in our life. He gave us the power to succeed. Because you can experience, uh, you can succeed in your life, not only succeed or have great success by owning multiple um, things, but you could be succeed uh, or, or be, um, you know, in a place where you can have good grades or good health or, or your family values are, are in sync because why you're succeeding because he has given you the power. I would meet tonight. So God revealed to us that it is not our own strength that made us prosper. That's why we will go to the wilderness strength, wilderness test. When does the test occur tonight? This is an important question. So we understand that we will go through the wilderness test. 
The wilderness is a place of difficulties, a place of opposition, a place where there are insufficient resources, a place of opposition. And so we understand that we all will go through this wilderness test at some period in our life. But when does the, the wilderness test occur in our life? When does God allow us to go through the wilderness test? Is it in order or is it random? Because we have so many different tests that we can go through, like the character test, the discouragement test, the word test, the time test, and we name it as we go along. But when does God actually allow us to go through the wilderness test? When does the test occur? The tests occur so that we will not forget God. That's when the test would occur, in a time when we would not forget God. You know, sometimes, you know, we can get all the blessings of God and everything is going good for us. And all of a sudden, we understand at the beginning that God is the one that gives us power to get well. But the time when we start to enjoy the blessing, we forget who God is. And so the tests occur so that we would not forget God. That's why it's coming. That's why you will go through it. So that you will not forget God. So that we would learn to trust God. Are you following me? This is why the test will occur. So we wouldn't forget God and so that we will learn to trust in God. Every child of God will not just say that I love God and I believe in God. But we have to learn to trust Him. The wisest king said to us, trust the Lord with all your heart. Not peace. All of your heart. And when you do, he's going to direct your path. He's going to make every crooked path straight. But you got to trust him. And so the tests occur so that we will learn to trust God. In the midst of whatever the situation may be, we, we will come to a place that we learn to trust God. Also, the tests occur so that our faith in God will grow stronger. That's why the test will occur. So that our faith will grow stronger. Because God will allow or use the willingness test to strip any leader of all the wisdom and ways of the world and to teach him the ways of the spirit. Are you hearing me? Remember, remember Moses was trained to be a Pharaoh. So he learned all the different arts and, and that stuff like that in the time because Egypt was the prominent city of the world. And to be the next Pharaoh, you would have to learn him in, in the cultures and learn all the different things that a Pharaoh needs to learn. So Moses was, learned, was a learned person as far as the things of the world. But when God had a call upon his life and before God could use him, God had to strip him in the wilderness. Strip him as a leader of all the wisdom and the ways of the world. And then teach him the ways of his spirit. Because it's not about our intellectual standards and our capabilities. All that is good. But we have to submit that to God. Because God said he will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So it's not about our brilliancy. Or how much degrees that we have in our, uh, in our thermometer. As far as our learning is concerned. But God will use the willingness test to strip us of this world wisdom. Amen. So that we can learn or be taught by his spirit. Every leader must learn that God's ways are different from his own. Are you following me? Every leader will have to learn that God's ways are, diff are different from, from his own. So sometimes the best way to learn is through dry and lonely and desert experiences. So that our faith in God would grow stronger. As I said, a wasteland experience or a desert experience also drives a leader to cultivate his life in prayer and the word. That's how we would go stronger. Because when you find yourself in a wasteland or a desert land, remember we define what wilderness is. It's a place of difficulty, a place of oppression, a place of in re, in, um, insufficient resources. A place that is uncultivated. So when we find ourselves in that place 
as, as a believer in the wilderness, amen, it, it, the wilderness comes to drive that person so they can be cultivate his or her life in prayer and the word. So when you're going to a test, God wants you to get into the word. God wants you to seek his faith because only then our faith in God can grow stronger. Many leaders need dry places to exhaust the, re the reservoir of sheer nervous energy that they draw from to serve the Lord. It will take a willingness and experience for a lot of people, amen, to drain and exhaust them from the things of the world. I hear me. Because when God places you in a wilderness, sometimes it will use you. Your own try to equate how, why, and all of these things, and try to use what you know to get you out, but no avail. And they keep doing, 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 till they reach a place that, you know what, my ways can't get me out of this. I got to simply trust God. You see, the wilderness has been designed, the wilderness test has been designed to motivate a, a person or a leader. A child of God who have been called by God to seek the Lord in a consistent life of prayer and the word. To find a genuine and most fruitful source of strength which is God himself. That's what the wilderness is about. To push you. Are you following me? To get you to that place. So that you can get, that your faith can grow, amen, stronger in God. The test occurred tonight also so that we would have a platform from which we could minister to those around us. And that's important. So that we could have a platform. And that's why when you're going through the wilderness, this test is not just for you. Yes, God used it to prepare you. But it is a platform that God will, that which will serve for you to minister to others because you know what? You have been to the wilderness. You have been to a place of difficulty. That's why the Apostle Paul says that we have this, this, this treasure in earthen vessel. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, when he says that the earthen vessel were just mere clay pots, it was everyday vessel. It wasn't like a gold, um, a gold a cylinder. Or, 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 it was just clay pottery. It was, it was an everyday thing. It wasn't a valuable. The pottery was not valuable. It was a common, a common container that he, that he used to use to put garbage in. He used to use the pottery in that time to put expensive stuff like use it as a vault to put their, 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 their belongings or, or money or gold or jewelry. So the latter part is what Paul was expressing that God has taken this earthen vessel this common thing, and he has placed treasures within us. So he says that the excellency of the power they will not be of us, but it will be of God. Because what God is trying to show you, that you are frailty. I hear me. You are, as pottery is easily broken. You are the cheap stuff, but here it is that, that God has placed treasures within you. So that when God has to use you, his power, you cannot boast it about you. But you have to remember who I am. I'm just this weak vessel. But what is demonstrated out of my life is because he has placed this treasure within me. And that's the platform that, that the, when the tests occur, so that we will have this platform from which we can minister to those that are around us. Because I've been to the mill. And he continues to say, the Apostle Paul, and he says, I am hard pressed on every side, yet not forsaken. I'm persecuted, not forsaken. Are you following me? Perplexed, but not in despair. And we come to the understanding that as much as you go to the wilderness, God is going to keep you. But you've got to, it's vital that you learn the lesson in the wilderness so it becomes your platform from which you can minister. Because when you meet somebody amen, who are 
going through some difficulties or going through some oppressive situation or come to a place that these people don't have insufficient resources to pay their bills and you have been there, you have been into that, into that wilderness experience. So it's a platform that God will use so that you can minister to others. Are you following me tonight? And that's what God is doing in our lives today. We're talking about the wilderness test. So how God tests us? How does God even use this test? How we, do we understand that we're in the wilderness test? Because he allows us to lack. He allows us to come to a place where we are lacking in our lives. As much as God is our provider, he will allow you to come to a place to have a lack in your life. Because he's going to test you. Because when we have plenty or when we have everything that we need, we are right. But when there's a lack in our life, you would see the mindset of the thinking of when we have lack. Lack just no, just no mean money. We talk about general resources that we may be lack of. So God, God tests us or allows us to lack in areas because he supply our need in a manner in which we are not familiar are you hearing me because that's why we can't box in God to provide for us in one way that's why God allows us to go through the wilderness test in our life to show us that that he can provide for us if he can he could tell amen Jesus needed to pay um, Caesar the taxes and he tell Peter, hey, go catch a fish and open them out of fish. You get gold. He provided to pay the taxes in one way. When it comes to Elijah, he said, Elijah, I want you to go to the brook chariot. And God spoke to a, a raven and, tell, and had that raven carrying food for Elijah. Are you hearing me tonight? So God tests us because he, he wants us to come to this place of understanding that he will supply our need in a manner which we are not familiar with. Also, he allows us to be dependent on him. Are you hearing me? God tests us so that we can come to a place of putting our total dependency upon him. And not of our own strength. Because if anybody else could be your supplier or your provider for you, you would not trust God because you have another supplier. But when you come to a place that you don't have external uh, uh, suppliers amen, to meet your need, then you come to a place to fully put your dependency on God. Because there's no other way that you can see that you're getting supply, but only trust Him. So your dependency becomes one that you're totally dependent upon God to provide for you. Do you know at times in, in how God tests us is because He allows us to be stressed. Why would he allow you to be stressed? It's because he wants you to understand, as we said before, there's a purpose, amen, to the end of why you're going through the wilderness. So when you, you become into a place of stress, you've got, to start, you've got to start proclaiming or confessing what the word of God says. That's the time, instead of allowing the negative things or focusing on the things that is bringing you stress, you've got to focus because remember, he's testing you. So when you're going to test now, you've got to start confessing what the word of God says. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I am more than conqueror. He greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. God says he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. God says he will give me the power to gain wealth tonight. Are you hearing me? So instead of allowing the negativities or the pressures of life to bring you to a place of stress, amen, God will allow you to go through this period so that you can hold or declare what his word says in opposition to how you feel. And then God allow us at times to suffer pain. Because every one of us, regardless of our ethnicity and, and regardless of the color and the texture of our skin, pain is pain regardless. 
regardless of our nationality, when we experience pain, we all experience pain. But the reason for that is that God allows us to suffer pain is because God is more interested in our character than He is our comfort. God is interested in our character than He is in our comfort. That's why, you know, in one aspect of one point of reference to Jesus being laid to when Mary and Lazarus say, my brother is sick. Come. Because if you come, you probably would pray with him, he will heal. But Jesus purposed that he went there four days later. And when he arrived, they said, he already dead. He's buried. He's stinking. Then he asked the question, he said, yes, we understand we live in the resurrection. But it fails to realize that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. I hear God will use everything necessary. And he will use the will in the test. Because as I said before, God is more interested in building your character so that you will be a person of integrity. Man cannot see his weakness until circumstances reveal it. So that's why you go to the wilderness test because we cannot see our own weakness until circumstances reveal our weaknesses. I am strong in the Lord, really. It's one thing to declare it, but circumstances will reveal whether you're strong or not. I will trust God Till I die, I will believe in God. And the moment there is insufficient, insufficient funds, amen, for you to meet the needs, you know that you're confessing, I believe God is my provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. But the moment that there comes a time where there's insufficient funds or resources to pay your bills or to meet your needs, amen, is he still your Jehovah Jireh? So God allow us tonight, because man cannot see his weaknesses until... Circumstances reveal it. Impatience is revealed when something hinders our progress. And how many times that we, as sons and daughters of the Lord tonight, we become impatient? Because when there's impatience, it reveals when something hinders our progress. What about pride? Is one. Pride is revealed when we are forced to do something menial. I'm not supposed to do that. I shouldn't sweep the church because I'm the pastor of the church. We, pride steps in because we start to look at titles rather than understanding that Jesus said, I didn't come to be served but to serve. And anybody who wants to be the greatest in the kingdom must first serve. He didn't say you have to have a title. And so pride is revealed when we are forced to do something menial. What about stubbornness? Stubbornness is revealed when we are forced to do something that we do not desire. We can become stubborn. Our lack of faith is revealed when we are required to do more than what we are able I can't do that because you look at your incapability rather than the capability of the God that you serve. That's why the Apostle Paul addresses and says, we can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthened us. So we, 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 it is revealed, our lack of faith is revealed when we are required to do more than we are able to. God will always put you in a place beyond your capability and action to do stuff that you may think or tell yourself, I cannot do that. Because first to begin is, we start thinking about our capabilities rather than what God can do through us. Moses did it the same way. 
God told Moses to go speak to Pharaoh. And, 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 and Moses said to God, he make an excuse. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a man of stammering lips. In other words, he's saying, God, I'm in, incapable of going and talk to Pharaoh. Because you look at his weaknesses. Are you hearing me? And there it is that we can, it, it shows us tonight. When, when, we, when we cannot see our weaknesses, God reveal it through the circumstances. And so we see our lack of faith because we are required to do more than we are capable of. Another aspect is revealed is idolatry. Idolatry is revealed when we are required to sacrifice those things that matter to us. Like you have a favorite place you sit in the church. And somebody take your seat and you come in. How is your reaction? Because you are required to sacrifice the things that are matter to you. I'm just using this, but I'm saying it can be anything that, that you hold on to. As long as we're living in this life, we cannot hold on to stuff. We are just stewards, we are not owners. God gave us things to be stewards of. Not to be, not to claim it, have this mindset, I own it, I claim it as mine. No, we've got to understand that God entrusted to us so that we can be good stewards of it. I hear me. We own nothing on this earth. But everything that we have is because God entrusted us so that we can be good stewards of it. Idolatry. And there's a lot of people like when the, the young rich ruler came to Jesus, good master, how can I have this eternal life? And when Jesus started to speak to him because Jesus already knew what was the idolatry in his life. And so Jesus says, go and do the commandments, follow the commandments. The young man says, I follow the commandments. So he's justifying his action and he says, I live, I live, I follow the commandments. But Jesus already, because man will look at the outward, but God will look at the inward of our life. And God, Jesus saw the idolatry in his life because his riches was his idolatry, was his idol. Anything that becomes an idol is where that captivates you, that controls you. And so therefore Jesus tell him, go now. Take your riches and, and sell it and distribute to the poor. And the Bible says that the young man left sorrowful. Because his money was his idol. And so idolatry is revealed when we are required to sacrifice those things that matter to us. I hear me. Also, as we, as we come to a close tonight, immaturity. Immaturity is revealed in a person's life when he can't have his own way. That's why God places us in kingdom community. It's because we all can make a significant input. But rather, immaturity is revealed when you don't want to listen to anybody or take anybody advice on how to do it. You want to do it your way or you want to have your own way. It's about how I do it. And, you, and you, don't, you put a blind eye or deaf ear to the other's input. Are you following me tonight? So immaturity is revealed when we cannot have our, our own way. Then self-will. Self-will is revealed tonight when we are required to do something against personal ambition. Are you seeing that tonight? When we are quiet to do something against our personal ambition. And then lastly, <coughs> self-centeredness is revealed when we are forced to serve others. As long as we are in ministry and are called to ministry and we go to the wilderness test, it's because the wilderness will reveal these things in our life. Because we are called to serve. And we could be self-centered. Self-centeredness is revealed when we are asked, amen, to serve others. Why should I serve them? They should be serving me instead. You know, I'm the church longer than them. You know, I'm older than them. 
And so self-centeredness is revealed when we are forced to serve others. Is anybody learning something tonight? Matthew 12 and 35 tells us, A good man out of the good treasures of his, of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So if there is good treasures, then it will be a good man. But if there is evil treasures coming forth, then that man is evil. I want you to know the wilderness says so any test for that matter that we go through as a believer. Or a person who calls into ministry and are going through the preparation period. The testing is inevitable. It's going to happen. It's not a matter if it's going to happen. But the question is when it's going to happen. You cannot postpone God's process. It is going to happen. It is inevitable. The testing is not only inevitable, it is continual. So as long as you're on this journey, as long as you put yourself to walk in the will of God, it will be a continual testing in your life. Because we are striving or making stride towards perfection. So it will not only be inevitable, it's going to be continual. And also the testing will be necessary. You can't tell God, well, you don't need to test me. Because God sees the heart and he knows that it is necessary for you to undergo the testing. So the testing is inevitable. The testing is something that will continue as you walk or you make a journey through this life. And it's also necessary. But the testing is also productive. So it is necessary, but it is working in your life so that you become productive. Are you hearing me? The Bible tells us, it talks about a, tr a man, a farmer, or a gardener pruning his tree. Because the tree has potential to bring forth much fruit. But there's a hindrance for, from, for the tree bringing forth fruit. So what this man does, he goes out and he, he prunes the branches. And the pruning, the pruning is cutting away. And every time that God will prune our lives, it will be hurtful. But it is necessary so that we become productive. Are you hearing me? So God will see the errors that need to be pruned in our life. And when we go to the pruning, it's only because God is, is, is bringing us in the place that we bear much fruits in our life, that our fruits will remain. Are you with me tonight? Also, when you go to the testing, the testing is influential. As I said, we can clarify that because when you go through a test, it's not just for you. So the test itself becomes an, an aspect on an avenue of influence. Because now you have gone through it, you become an influence of that test because you become a voice to speak to others what you have been through. So the test becomes influential. And it is safe to say tonight that the test that we go through is crafted by God. I hear me. God didn't allow the devil to craft it. It's not just God pick out something, have a whole set and just pick out one and say, this is for you. No. Every test that you go through is crafted and designed by God. What you're experiencing in your life right now has been crafted or designed or allowed by God for you to go through. It is imperative that we go through the testing because in the process of going through the testing is to bring us to a place to become a, a, a man or woman of character and of integrity. So that our lives will come to bear the image of Christ. Are you hearing me? 
The whole purpose of God working through our life is so that the image of God can be seen in our life. That's why the Bible tells us that wherever we go, let our light shine. Because when we let our light shine, people see the God in us and glory. The good works that is happening. The good things that is taking place because they recognize it is because of God. In the beginning, God created it. Man and woman. God created us so that we could bear the image in the beginning. But because of the fall, the image was tainted. And so God is restoring back his image to the sons of God. And the sons of God are those who accepted Christ in their heart. And so therefore, he will take you through the testings. He will allow you to go through the testings. Because he wants it, it he knows it, it, it's inevitable. It is continual, it is necessary, it is productive, it is influential. And God wants you to know it's he is the one who has crafted it. So it's going to work for your betterment. But there's some dangers to the, of the testing. And just to touch on it tonight, because people become disillusioned. They become distraught. People become distracted. People become angry. People become bitter. People become hardened when they're going through the testing. It depends on how you receive it. Because that's why I said it is important that God says that we get the understanding of it so that when we are going through that we will be able to make the enduring bearable. But people who do not take the time to understand why that God will allow us to go through the testing, they will become bitter, they become hard, they become angry with God. They become dis distracted in their walk with God, distorted, disillusioned. And so therefore we only focus on the question, well, why God loved me and so why God has to allow me to go through this? But they don't see or understand the reason behind it all is because when we come to understand the purpose of it, amen, it will help us to in the enduring. It is bearable because we know that God has a purpose for it all. Because He's polishing me. And as He polishing me, I will shine. When he polish me, I'll be able to reflect his goodness, reflect his love, reflect his character through my life. My hands become Jesus' hands. My, 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 my eyes, my mouth even becomes his. Because why? Now I have a compassion like God. I have a compassion like Jesus to reach out amen, to save humanity. Only two men were promoted to becoming a king. Without the struggles of the wilderness. And this is important to see. Only two men in scriptures were promoted to becoming a king without the struggle of the wilderness. And I want you to see what their life ended up to be. King Saul. How many remember King Saul? King Saul, he didn't went through the wilderness experience. And as a result of he didn't go through the testings of his life, King Saul was consumed by jealousy. King Saul, when we look at his life, he went ahead. When the prophet he should have done, he should have waited for the prophet to make the sacrifice. When, when, when God gave a word to destroy everything, he kept the best of the, of the animals. And he went and sacrificed it when only the priest was a sacrifice. And also he went against God. He didn't go through the wilderness experience and therefore he was killed in battle. Are you following me tonight? King Saul was consumed by jealousy. Not only King Saul, but look at King Solomon. He didn't went through the wilderness period of his life. He didn't go through the tests of life. Yet, even though he was one of the wisest king, he was consumed by his own passion. That's why because of his own passion, we read statements like, how could God allow that? It wasn't God allowed that. Because King Solomon was consumed by his own passion that he had over 300 and something wives and also in total, how much? 900 and something concubines. In his harem as a king. Because why? He was consumed with his passion. 
You read the life of King Solomon and you would see what he was consumed with. I want you to know, if we don't go through our testings in our life, we can be like King Saul or King Solomon. Are you hearing me? While the testing is universal, how we respond is left up to our personal inclination. And that's why the testings is universal fast. We all will go through the testings of life. But how you respond to those testings is up to our own personal inclination. Because God can allow you to go through it. And you become disillusioned. You can become distorted. You can become distracted. You can become angry. You can come, become bitter. And you can become hardened of heart. Or you can respond in this way. I know that whatever God allow me to go through. I'm going to rejoice because I know the end of it is going to work for my betterment. I hear me. You see, there's also not only dangers of the testing, but there's blessings of the wilderness test. And I'll close with these few. When you go to the wilderness test tonight, you will see the supernatural work of God. Anytime God allows you to go through the wilderness test, you will experience the supernatural work of God. Remember, Moses was in the desert. He was in the wilderness. But he see the supernatural. Are you hearing me? He saw God, the, 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 the tree on the, the bush on fire. Yes, it was not consumed. And the, a voice was speaking out. When you go to the wilderness test, you will see the supernatural. Because remember, God is preparing you. Look at men as Moses and look at Paul. Look at their life. Look at Elijah. They went to the wilderness experience. But look at what God did. He they saw the supernatural power of God manifested. How many would like to see the supernatural of God's power in operation? Because when you go through the wilderness test, your dependency and your reliability is not on self, but is on God. And it shapes your mindset that if in the wilderness and you put your trust and dependency on God, and God has proven himself, that whatever situation that you have going on, God could prove himself and you can see the supernatural work of God administering to any situation. When we go to the, the blessings of the wilderness test, we receive assurance of the care of God. Remember when you read this passage of scripture, you would see that they were hungry. And God provided for their manner, the uh, unknown to them. It's one, in scripture it says it was angel food. Yet still it sustained them. Are you hearing me? God provided. God did give them the assurance that he cared for them. He, was, he moved in the wilderness as a cloud, a pillar of cloud by day. Amen. To, to protect them from the rays of the sun. And he would be a pillar of cloud, a pillar of fire by night. So the coldness of the desert will not destroy them. God assure them that he cares for them. Also in the wilderness, when we go to the blessings of the wilderness test, we receive the assurance of the power of God. God is with us. Are you hearing me? Moses' confidence was built and understand that God was with him. That's why when he went to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, God said to let my people go. Are you hearing me? He, he had the assurance of the power of God. So when he threw the stick, God had a purpose for it. Even though the magician threw the stick and it turned into serpents. Because even Pharaoh said, you come to me with cheap magician's trick. Because when Moses threw his rod, it turned into a big serpent. And he called his, his magician and they threw their stick. And their stick was turned into serpents. But the serpent from Moses' rod devour the magician serpents. Because he saw... That God gave him the assurance of the power of God. 
when we the blessings of the wilderness is that we have the assurance of the faithfulness of God God is faithful that even though that we messed up God is still faithful to us even though that we do wrong even though we disobedient God is still faithful to us and that's the blessings of the wilderness test we receive the faithfulness of God God is faithful towards his children the blessing of the wilderness test also we are transformed by the renewing of our minds because somehow when we go to the wilderness test amen we start to see not the, the impossibilities, but rather we start to see things from a possibility. Because why? In the wilderness, the faith, it may change, it may not change the, out, the outer aspect of our circumstances, but it changes the outlook of our circumstances. Because we have a different perspective now, because if God is in control tonight, amen, no matter how difficult it may be, my mind is renewed because I'm not holding to the negative but I'm holding to the positive that God will make a way out. Our minds are renewed. We become mature believers, mature sons and daughters. We grow. We develop. We will develop the ability to endure the hardship and the difficulties. And lastly, we will lack in nothing. James said, consider all joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, endurance. He says, but be letting that patience, endurance have its perfect work or full effect, in other words, so that you shall be perfect or mature and complete, lacking nothing. Do you understand why would God allow you to go through the wilderness test? Because our effectiveness and success depend upon our response to the various trials or testing. Write it down somewhere. Our effectiveness and success depends upon our response to the various trials or testing. James is saying, when you're going through the trials and testing, consider it all joy. And when we do, that effectiveness and success comes as our response to the testing and trials that we have undergone. I meet tonight. May every child of God, every leader, consider every wilderness test a special class in the school of God's spirit from which he can derive much spiritual benefits. So your wilderness experience or your wilderness test is a special class in the school of God's spirit because you can derive much spiritual benefits. Are you with me tonight? I trust that this has been not only knowledgeable, but as you see, that we come to this greater understanding that there is benefits in our testing. And that we come to this understanding so that it will make the enduring bearable. I hear you. So tonight we conclude with the wilderness test. Next week we'll go into another test. And I pray that as you may find yourself in a place called the desert or the wilderness, whether it be from a position of insufficient resources, oppositions, whatever it may be, pressure, that you will understand that God has a purpose for this. And he is working out the blessings for your life. The ultimate thing is that you will become the man or the woman of character, 
and of integrity. That your life can bear the image of God. Amen tonight. I want to thank those who are watching via the internet tonight for being a part of this Bible study. And I really pray and trust that you have received and that you will understand the principles of why we go to the wilderness test. And may the, this lesson be beneficial to not only you but to all of us that as we go through the testing, we will understand that God is shaping us to be men and women of character and integrity. May God bless you tonight. Let's just stand as we close off in prayer tonight. <clears throat> Father, tonight I just thank you tonight. Thank you, God, that you have revealed yourself to us. I pray, God, that whatever test that we may be right now, that we will learn from it so that we'll be able to endure. Oh, God, Father, I pray tonight, God, as James says, that we'll count it all joy, knowing that the benefits of the trial of the testing is working for us, that we come into a place that we lack nothing, oh God. I pray today, God, keep us, help us, oh God, as sons and daughters of the kingdom, that we will walk as men and women of integrity and of character that will be pleasing to you. I pray, oh God, let Christ be seen in everything that we do in our life. I pray, God, dear choices, blessings upon your people tonight in Jesus' name. And God, God, people say, Amen and 